Hello guys, Luna here and welcome back to another video for Black Ops Cold War. And in this one, I want to talk about the changes that have been made from the Black Ops Cold War Alpha to the Beta. Changes include to weapons, movement and lots more patch notes, but also I wanted to quickly go over the new content that is new in the Beta. So we'll start with the new content that you can expect to see at the weekend if you're going to be playing it. All the content from the Alpha will of course be returning, so that's Team Deathmatch, Domination and Kill Confirmed but also 12v12 mode combined arms dominion, the four maps Miami, Satellite, Armada and Crossroads, plus the ability to try out create a class and score streaks. But in the beta you can play VIP Escort, a game mode I haven't really played since Overwatch, but it's pretty similar, except for the fact that your entire team can win if you kill the enemy team. Combined Arms Dominion is returning with a new map called Cartel, but it also has a second combined arms game mode called Assault, Basically, you must capture zones that brings you deeper into enemy territories and you have to capture all the zones to win. Fireteam Dirty Bomb will be coming in the beta in week 2 and it sounds pretty exciting. 10 teams of 4 will compete to take out enemies, collect uranium caches, locate dirty bombs scattered throughout the map and successfully deposit the uranium into said bombs to detonate them and of course you will win. On top of this, there are more features to unlock in the beta that include a field of view slider for both console and PC. Of course, the field of view slider wasn't available for Modern Warfare on console, so that is a big addition. And HUD visual toggles and a ping system for multiplayer. Again, that is a new addition for Call of Duty. So lots of cool stuff is coming to the game in the beta, especially if you've played the alpha, because there is new content. But let's move on to what's changed in terms of gameplay by looking at the patch notes. And the alpha did have plenty of issues to say the least and the devs have tried to address many of the biggest ones and we'll start with movement. To core movement, they've integrated updated locomotion animations and systems for walking, jogging and sprinting and they've slightly increased the acceleration when moving from a standstill. To sprinting itself, they've reduced or removed several sprint penalties that could leave the player in a state of reduced sprint speed and this results in more opportunities to use the sprint takeoff feature for a quick burst of speed. Increase the time it takes to ramp down from maximum to minimum sprint speeds for a smoother change of speed. Slightly adjusted camera bob during sprint to better align with updated movement animations. And disabled field of view increase when sprinting. To sliding, they've slightly reduced the slide speed. Increased the minimum amount of time players must sprint before they slide. Of course, during the alpha, players could make some crazy movements by just pressing the slide button. And they've addressed an issue that allows players to cancel a slide without the appropriate slowdown. Okay, let's move on to weapons and the gunsmith. For the gunsmith, they have added a more detailed breakdown of statistics for each attachment, explaining in detail how each attachment influences the weapon's stats. And they've moved the gunsmith user interface button closer to the weapon for easier access. To recoil and firing animations, they've added new weapon recoil systems and firing animations with a comprehensive tuning pass for a revamped weapon firing wheel on every weapon for both hip fire and adds. Reworked and rebalanced all recoil patterns, impacting weapon balance and mastery across the board. So whatever your favorite weapon was in the alpha, for me it was the MP5, things might change in the beta. So we'll have to test that out. Full touch up pass on animations across all weapons based on feedback. To the aim down sights, they've added new ads weapon rendering technology for more realistic ads perspective, and they smoothed out all ads in and out transitions. For general weapon tuning, they've made tuning changes to alpha weapons that overperformed or underperformed, including increases to the AK-74 use recoil and its adds time, and increased to LMG ammo capacity and more. For attachment tuning, full attachment balance pass to ensure all attachments stay relevant and balanced. For sniper rifles specifically, they've added an aim assist on snipers for controller users for cross-platform balancing but it comes at the cost of a slower aim down sight speed. Several precision aiming adjustments to help the sniping experience feel more fluid. Sniper glint now displays more often and more reliably to help players understand when they are in danger. And sniper rifles now require higher hits on the body for one hit eliminations, for example, the upper chest instead of the stomach or the limbs. And finally, we have one change to frag grenades. They've reduced the fuse time on the frag grenade for the beta and the throw speed adjustments are targeted for launch as well. So there are more changes coming for frag grenades. A couple of changes then to visuals and for the graphics, they've improved the graphical fidelity and performance across the board. And for lighting and visibility, they've adjusted lighting and character visibility throughout the Miami map for better overall visibility based on player feedback. Next up, we have audio changes. 
For weapon audio, they've added bass and a punch to all weapon sounds by adjusting the master equalization and compression output. Added three presets to audio settings, Treyarch Mix, Bass Boost and High Boost to suit player preferences. And these were available in the alpha, but changing the settings didn't actually make any changes to the audio, but that's because Treyarch hadn't actually put in the settings into the game. Redesigned several weapon audio layers, corrected audio DK playback, and added blending for interior and exterior sounds, and polished reverb audio across all maps. To footsteps, and of course this plays a big part in any multiplayer or warzone match. For crouch walking, this now functions as a near silent movement option available to all players with or without the ninja perk. For aim and down sights, crouch walking now makes the player's footsteps audio even quieter. Enemies should not hear the player when crouching outside of extreme close quarters. While ninja is equipped, core movements such as sprinting, jogging and walking are now greatly reduced in volume and distance by roughly 50% compared to the alpha. And for the aimed outside walking, this will also provide a significant stealth advantage when using ninja. To hit marker audio, added new sounds for fatal and non-fatal hit markers. For score streak audio, a polished audio for several score streaks. To the spy plane audio, they've reduced the volume of the spy plane's locational pings, and for the first time in a Black Ops game, spy plane pings are directional and locational based on where an enemy is. Lastly, they've tweaked the bullet crack system to prevent players from hearing sounds when they shouldn't and vice versa. Let's move on then to the score streak system. Objective score streak rewards have been increased in Domination, Kill Confirmed and Hardpoint, and these will reward any objective player and do not require or reward objective streaking. Adjusted score streak rewards to reduce score streak spam and make score streaks more rewarding. Players will need to go on a higher streak in a single life to earn top tier score streaks. And they've also reduced score streak cooldowns to offset these changes and allow players to cycle through score streaks more often. Let's move on then to map spawns. For Miami, full spawn pass for team deathmatch and kill confirm modes on Miami with the goal of reducing the time to engagement and increasing the overall pace of 66 games. Spawns at the end of the map have been pulled in closer, added new spawns to get players back into the fight faster, and adjusted the spawn logic to reduce the distance at which an enemy player will influence the enemy team's spawn point. For Moscow, they've done the same, they've added spawns across several modes to allow for more safe spawns in relation to the enemy player's location. For Armada, they've reduced how often players can spawn at the rear of their home ship to reduce travel back time to engagement. And that was one of the problems I had with Armada, that when you die, you had to spend quite a lot of time getting back to the middle of the map where the main engagements take place. For Crossroads, they've adjusted combined arms domination, spawn logic, and spawn placement to keep players spawning closer to their own objectives. And to satellite, they've adjusted the spawn logic to allow for slightly easier spawn flipping in certain modes instead of teams becoming spawn trapped for long periods of time. Next up then, we have vehicles. For vehicle damage tuning, they've reworked the bullet damage mitigation model for tanks to provide a more consistent experience across weapon classes. This fixes issues where some guns seemed inordinarily more powerful against vehicles than others. They've also adjusted the Cavalry Lancer weapon attachment to be more consistent across weapons, especially on LMGs, and they'll continue to keep a close eye on tuning for launch for that issue. Lastly, they've reduced tank health to make launchers and C4 more effective counters, and reduced the deadliness of tank shells splash damage. For bug fixes, there are quite a few of these, I will just go over them quickly. For character models, they've addressed an issue where players would disconnect during a match as a result of a character model displaying unnaturally. They've fixed the AK-74U's reload animation. Players will no longer be able to ride the RC. They fixed an issue with gunboats, an issue with motion blur, an issue where players could be stuck in windows in Moscow, issues with mantling, an issue where players were able to move before the start of a match, invisible weapons, incorrect scoreboards, and of course, various issues with stability. Lastly, for new features, they've added the ping system, which I mentioned, field of view slider and HUD options but they've also added adjustments to settings that were already in the game. They've adjusted the rule set around when friendly player names would show to reduce instances where friendly name plates would appear over enemies in certain situations. A big one, they've expanded the option to reduce minimum stick input threshold, aka the dead zone, to zero. And of course, a lot of players want to turn off dead zone completely and it wasn't an option before, but now it is. The score limit for kill confirmed has been reduced to 65 to prevent the time from reaching the limit. Players can now rotate their character, swap weapons, add and change stance during the pre-round timer. 
And lastly, the beta, unlike the alpha, will contain some kind of progression level system. And Treyarch will go into more detail about that as we get closer to the launch of the full game. But you will be able to rank up to certain levels to unlock additional content throughout both the beta weekends. So you can look forward to that. All right, guys, that is about it for this one. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, then leave a like. It is very much appreciated. And drop a comment below about what you think about all the changes and new content coming to the Cold War beta this weekend and next. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys again next time.